Thanks, David. Thanks, everybody, for investing a few minutes to uh, hear about our story. Um, let's see how this works. Our disclaimer. So, um, Caballetta exists to develop and launch the first curative targeted cellular therapies for autoimmune diseases. Uh, we were formed in 2018. That first slide has been with us since the day we were formed. We're pursuing cures in autoimmune diseases using two strategies. The CARTA strategy, which is CAR-T in autoimmunity, is being pursued with our lead program, CABA 201. We're really excited about CABA 201, which we announced this morning. Um, we've uh, formed an exclusive global licensing agreement with IASO in order to use their clinically tested um, and adequately safe CD19 binder in our product, CABA 201. We're excited about the prospects of a CD19 directed product with a 41BB costimulatory domain because that is exactly the sort of product that was used in a Nature Medicine publication on September 15th this year. The product they used was an FMC 63 binder, CD19 binder, a murine form of our fully human binder. They used a 41BB costimulatory domain. We have a 41BB costimulatory domain. We expect to file the IND on this product in the first half of next year. We have a track record of five years of meeting all of the milestones as a public company the last three years that we've set out to meet or exceed. We're excited by the prospects of the product because in the Nature Medicine publication, five refractory patients with lupus who had failed cyclophosphamide, steroids, and every other concoction you can think of, were treated with a single infusion of CAR-T therapy preceded by full preconditioning, FLUCI preconditioning. FLUCI preconditioning, CD19 infusion, and the result was complete remission of disease in four out of five patients with nearly complete remission in the fifth who had remnants of renal disease. We believe that this product has the potential to treat a variety of the most challenging and largest autoimmune diseases that are the bane of the existence of many specialists across the globe and are uh, really serious unmet needs for patients with autoimmune diseases. Very excited about the CARTA platform. We'll talk more about that. The CAR-T platform is the one we've become best known for. Um, in a way, I think of that as we've been warming up. These are focused on pure B-cell-mediated autoimmune diseases where the biology and the preclinical data are terrific and where, unlike the CARTA platform, which has clinical proof of concept, the CAR-T platform has clinical proof of safety, but not yet the sort of efficacy that we believe is there. We believe that that is because we have not used preconditioning to date. We started with monotherapy, and we've now progressed both our Descartes trial for pemphigus patients and now our Muscart trial, which is moving into the clinic. Both are going to rapidly move into preconditioning combinations of therapy, and we're inspired by the results of Professor Shett's uh, paper from Nature Medicine. All of our programs have a very deep uh, translational research component to them. And because of that, Professor Shett, who is the senior author on the Nature Medicine paper and who continues to treat patients with a variety of autoimmune diseases, chose to exclusively partner with us for our translational research capabilities. That partnership will give us access to prior and future patients treated with CAR-T therapy even before our IND is filed. Frankly, already have provided us with important insights based on the data that we see and we are generating. So we're thrilled with the opportunity to take a well-oiled machine, our team, with great success and track record, to implement it across these two strategies to achieve that first slide. Um, we're very fortunate that we've been um, frugal even when the markets were hot as heck, we raised a bunch of money, much more than we needed, 
a history of spending about $10 million per quarter. We have a little less than $100 million in the bank at the end of the second quarter, and we recently, in concert with announcing our licensing deal, extended our runway through the second quarter of 2024, and within the time frame, we should be able to deliver many clinical milestones in each of these programs. You can see the specifics on the slide. Just for clarity, the CARTA platform, or the CARTA strategy and the CAR-T strategy, one cab a platform, two strategies. Some folks are asking us, you have clinical proof of concept now with a product where yours is fully human and the one that delivered this remarkable data um, is murine and yours looks exactly the same. It's gonna work, right? Why are you doing the CAR-T platform any longer? And the answer is, there are five patients. We're out to cure disease for patients. This is not a competition between these two strategies. It's a competition against the disease, and we are going to do what we said on that first slide. We'll have two shots on goal to do it, a second generation, an advanced generation of programs in each being developed, and it's the CARTA platform that is classic CAR-T therapy for autoimmunity, and that's good for complete ablation of all the B cells, as it usually does. For a variety of reasons, not time enough to go into today, part of which we're studying uh, with our translational research, the B cells are not uh, ablated permanently. It's only a transient ablation. So the B cells are eliminated completely, and they come back, they repopulate with no evidence of serologic or clinical lupus as long as 17 months after treatment. No patient has had recurrence of pathogenic autoreactive B cells. So that's a terrific platform. It does have the risk that in patients who are not 20 to 24 years old, who are not exactly this patient, maybe there is aplasia at some point. So how do you manage that? How do you think about that? Well, that's where the translational research partnership comes in. Being able to design and deliver on the best clinical studies with the best product to be able to deliver on the promise for patients. The CAR-T platform, on the other hand, is an excellent choice and may deliver the best data in the long run for more orphan-related indications. Pemphigus vulgaris, musk form of myasthenia gravis, those are the two trials that are ongoing. We started with monotherapy, and because of the data that we've seen from Professor Shett in his trials as long ago as August of last year, we started thinking about using preconditioning. The Descartes trial is for pemphigus patients actively enrolling the preconditioned arm. The Musk trial, uh, Musk CART, is uh, on schedule to start enrollment this year and will deliver the initial um, six-month follow-up data in that program by the third quarter of next year. The platform, I think you get the sense, whether it's lupus or scleroderma or myositis or rheumatoid arthritis, these are all now in play. It's incredibly, terrifically exciting for patients and, frankly, for the company. Um, you know, we, we see ourselves really at a moment where we've prepared for this for years and, and we're ready to implement now with the right product, the right partners, and across a whole spectrum of disease. This is our platform. We are not yet discussing specifics regarding which indication we'll pursue at the turn of the calendar year. Um, uh, we, we hope to be able to do that early in the, uh, in the new year. Um, the DSG-3, the MUSK, the PLA-2R for membranous nephropathy uh, and, and uh, another pemphigus program are also in our pipeline, along with three other programs in the CAR-T uh, strategy. So let's dive into the CAR-T a little bit, and I, I gave you a, a sense up front, but this is more of the data. The paper is available um, uh, as a Nature Medicine um, a publication from September 15th of, of this year. Five out of five refractory lupus patients treated with a 4-1-BB co-stimulatory domain containing CD19 CAR-T product. It resulted in rapid and deep, deep elimination of all B cells in all patients without any exception. That was within 10 days. By the end of the month, all of the T cells, which had expanded as, and ranging from 11% to 59% of all T cells, were CAR-T in these patients. Those are numbers that with our 
other platform, our other strategy, we have never hit those numbers. So we have real reason to believe that when we do hit those numbers, that other strategy may deliver data. In this study, you had significant expansion of T cells and complete elimination of B cells. The clinical and serologic responses by three months were, honestly, you don't have to squint to see the data. And if you do squint, you still can't avoid seeing the data. Um, Josh Shimmer, who is a terrific analyst, put out uh, a piece yesterday on INI and, and talked about how one of the challenges in INI is there are so many people going after lupus, you can't figure out what the endpoint should be. Well, when the disease goes away completely off of all medications and stays gone until 17 months after you've treated with one therapy one time, you don't have a real challenge. So this is what we're looking at as an opportunity, and we think is um, terrifically well informed by this uh, paper. All of the serologic markers have been eliminated or diminished substantially within three months. You don't have to wait for this data. Once it hits, it persists. The only thing that changes is the new B cells are back, and they're healthy. There's no evidence serologically or clinically of any lupus in any of these patients after the B cells are ablated. So transient ablation can potentially, it's an astonishing thing, cure, but at least provide a complete remission in lupus patients who have failed all therapies. Our lead program in this space compares favorably with the product that was used in that academic clinical study and is still being used in other indications. In contrast to that product, we use a fully human CD19 binder. That binder has published preclinical data comparing its binding um, activity in vitro and in vivo activity against the exact binder that was used by Professor Shett in his trial. We know that we have comparable activity on the same epitopes as they are using their murine form of our human binder. When it comes to the co-stimulatory domain, it's the identical co-stimulatory domain. So you might ask, you're using a human binder, you don't have clinical data on that yet. Well, we do. In approximately 20 patients, that binder used in leukemia and lymphoma in an investigator-initiated trial, four patients have been published with excellent safety and tolerability. Uh, we have seen, uh, and there have been, approximately 20 patients treated with comparably excellent safety. So we're very comfortable on the uh, belief that this binder will not produce um, uh, unexpected, um, common side effects. We need a lot of patients to rule out things that are rare. So there's clinical data on the binder that de-risks the program. Our product looks a lot like one that has clinical proof of concept that is as astonishing in lupus as anything that exists, and we're thrilled to go forward into the clinic. We're taking that product, which we consider to be excellent and perhaps best in, in category, into patients in 2023. We, as a team, have a five-year track record of hitting all of our milestones, of successful regulatory interactions, including two INDs accepted within 30 days using CAR-T therapy in autoimmune patients. There just aren't a lot of companies that have ever done that, no less done it successfully. So from our point of view, we have the right product, we have the right team, and then to compound it all, we have the right partner. So Professor Shett continues to sit on the SAB of other companies and, and, and provide advice, as he should, to advance the field. But when it comes to having the data in your hands, maybe six months before it's published, and generating the data, that's the exclusive nature of our relationship. And that is possible because we've been practicing for this moment. So to summarize, um, this isn't my first uh, ride. Um, this is the best team I've ever worked with, um, by a lot. They are incredibly competent, capable, experienced. Many of you probably know some of them. Uh, this is an incredibly high-performing team with, go back to slide one, every intention of delivering really successful cures for patients with autoimmune disease who have no opportunity to achieve that. Our SAB is filled with the father of CAR-T therapy and now the father of CAR-T in autoimmunity, as well as Drew Weissman and others whose names you can see there with FDA and other experiences. 
Um, so we're thrilled. We think we have the right team, the right product, and, and this is the right time. The catalysts are shown here for all of the programs. Our cash runway takes us to the end of the second quarter of 2024, and we can deliver catalysts on every one of these programs starting as soon as getting into the clinic with Musk this quarter, and then moving on to deliver data, as you see on this slide, for all of the programs, and very importantly, bringing the IND for CABA 201 into the clinic in the first quarter or second quarter of next year, and delivering the first clinical data from that program within the cash runway, which takes us to the end of the second quarter of 2024. So again, my excitement is obviously palpable. This is thrilling for patients. Like cell therapy actually can cure autoimmune disease. We know it's possible, now we just gotta do it. Thanks.